Hello everyone, I'm Mark. Welcome back to the channel. Um, it's another sunny, beautiful day in Florida. Um, it's supposed to get up to 89 today. I think it's like 85 right now. It's about, I think it's around 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, humidity is 78%, so it feels like about 95 right now. I, I just turned the fan off again. I got a big uh, fan here that I run when I'm working out in the garage. and. Uh, pretty noisy so I've turned off when we're doing videos but uh, the instant I turn off I just the sweat just starts running out of me so I apologize that it looks like I'm melting here but it's definitely warm today but uh, anyway today's video uh, if you've seen the last video I put the insulation in the in the floor of the car today's video I was going to put some of the interior pieces in I want to put the carpet the seats and uh, I was missing some trim over the the back window on each side of the t-post and then on the front windshield, the trim that went across, and then also sun visors. The car didn't have sun visors in it. So I got all that stuff. I got it from uh, Corvette Generation. It's brand new stuff. Um, it, they actually, they're a dealer for Eckler, so they can order parts for me and, and actually save me a little bit of money, especially with shipping. Uh, most stuff they'll they'll take care of the shipping on it depends on what it is. But uh, anyway, I already got started. I put one piece of carpet down in the passenger side just to get it in there and then I was going to put the seats in I thought well it'd be easier to put the rear trim in first before I put the seats in so I went in and put the passenger side rear trim in first to see how easy it would be to put in and it, it went in really slick I had to trim one little corner on it where it was hitting uh, so it would go back up tight against the uh, the frame of the car but other than that it fit perfect I've got the other one just stuck in place now I'm going to put the screws in it so I'll turn the camera around and show you what I'm doing so far Okay, that is the, uh, that's the side I've already got put in. And right along there. And I had to put a screw here. And right here on this corner here where it goes in, I had to trim a little bit off the back side, but it doesn't show, it won't hurt anything. And then there's, uh, I think there's four screws total that hold it in place. And then I've got the other side just stuck in there right now. I'm going to go over and put the screws in it right now. <laughs> yeah, I did that other side first just to see how easy it'd be to do. And uh, the screws went right in. So I hope I have as good a luck on this side. Usually I don't. And then I bought a pack from Corvette Generation that has all the interior screws in it. And each pack, there are several little packets in the big pack and they're all labeled, tells you where the screws go. So it makes it kind of nice. So I got brand new screws to put this stuff up too because when you order these panels, it doesn't come with any fasteners. You have to supply your own. And most times you can just use your old fasteners over again if you have them, but this car Whoever did this car did not save the fasteners. So fortunately, I was able to order new fasteners too. And of course, this hole doesn't look like it's lining up as well as the other side did. So. There we go, going right in. And I'm not going to tighten it all the way down yet until I get the rest of the screws in. So then I'll tighten them all down in case I have to do a little bit of shifting around on this stuff. There's a little dimple in each one of these locations where the screws go. It's not an actual hole through the head, uh, through the panel, but you don't have to drill or anything and the, the screw will go right through it. And of course, I'm not hitting where I need to hit here. There we go. I just had to push it up into place a little bit more. Yeah, going right in. I don't know if you can see the levels in the camera. I've got that overhead door open. I'm getting a lot of light reflection back. 
they're just little dimples so you know right where the screws need to go. You don't have to guess or try to measure or anything. And you can see it's going right into the hole. Okay, one more. Lined up perfect. I can tighten them all down now. And there you go and there you have it looks like new i don't quite understand why it's not matching up over here i don't know if this panel needs to be pushed up more or something i don't know sometimes these cars they don't fit exactly perfect especially these old corvettes quality wasn't the best even the newer corvettes the quality is not that good so let me get the camera position repositioned on the front uh, windshield and then we'll we'll do that next this is that uh, screw kit I was telling you ordered uh, from Corvette Generation. It has all the interior screws in it. All these packs come in, one big pack, and they're all labeled. Uh, like that one says, uh, sun visor support rod frame screws, um, door panel screw set with washers. So they're all labeled out so you don't have to try to guess where they go. It worked out really nice. The only thing the kit doesn't come with is those little spring nut clips that go on the body itself that the screws go into. They don't come with that. And I was missing one on the back trim section. And uh, of course, Harbor Freight to the rescue. <laughs> I, every time I go in there, I try to grab a, a different assortment like this. I've got set screws, I've got little clips, uh, stainless screws, and a couple weeks ago I was in there and I bought this. It's a U-clip screw set, and I needed one of those, one of those little spring clips there, and they had it in there, so it, it saved me a, a trip back to the store to get it. So these things are pretty inexpensive, and they're just handy to have around when you just need that odd uh, fastener or, or connector or something. And uh, so, you know, if, if you go to Harbor Freight, uh, you definitely want to look at these and maybe start stocking up on some of these if you're going to be working on cars and stuff. It definitely comes in handy. So, uh, okay, let me get the, let me get the camera repositioned for the uh, front windshield and we'll videotape that. Or actually, you know what I think I'll do first? I think I'll go ahead and put this, this uh, the seats in. I think that'll make it a little bit easier for me doing the, the, the trim on the windshield to give me somewhere where to sit and, and reach a little bit easier. So let me get repositioned. We'll, we'll do the passenger side here first and then the driver's side. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is um, I have to install the seat belts before we can put the seats in. And um, I went ahead and put the carpet in. I vacuumed it out. And uh, this, this is the carpet that was in the car. I don't think it's original. It's too nice a shape. I think it's been replaced at some point along with some of the other trim pieces in here some of them you can tell they're brand new so he, he whoever had it before me did put a lot of a lot of money in this car with with uh, some of the trim pieces and stuff so which is good for me it saves me a little bit of money but I'll go ahead and put the seat belts in and uh, this car just came with the the seat belt, it doesn't have the shoulder harness. I don't really like that. I'd rather have the shoulder harness. So uh, when I get a chance, I'm gonna order different seat belts for the car. Because uh, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I think back in 71, you could order this with just seat belts or with the complete shoulder harness. And um, this this car appears to not have, have come with the shoulder harnesses originally so it it's got the uh 
feature for it on the seat, there's a slot in the seat where the belt actually goes through the seat and comes down over your shoulder and hooks into these belts. So that, that's why I'm saying I don't know 100%, but I'm, I'm guessing that it was an option back then that you could order. And uh, like I said, back, back in the 70s, people, people bought cars for, uh, you know, keep the price down on them. They, they didn't care about safety or anything like that. They just wanted a car to go fast. And if they could save 50 bucks on the price of the car by ordering it with just these belts, they would do it rather than thinking, well, you know, it might be safer to have them. And back then, nobody wore seat belts really. Uh, I mean, um, I never wore a seat belt until uh, they passed a the law saying you had to wear a seat belt. And uh, even then, I didn't wear one. <laughs> At first, I was a rebel. And I used to drag race, and I had a dually with a 26 foot enclosed trailer and, and a rear engine dragster. And the closest track was an hour and a half from my house. And I would, I would uh, drive to the track an hour and a half, not wear my seat belt. I get to the track, I get in my car, I put on a, a full racing suit, a helmet, a neck brace. I had the five point harness on, I had the wrist restraints to go. Uh, my car would take about five seconds down the, the eighth. And uh, one day I got to thinking, I think it's really stupid. You know, I, I'm, I'm in my race car, you know, five seconds at a time. And I put all the safety equipment on. I'm in this truck pulling this trailer down the highway for an hour and a half each way with no safety equipment. And so I just, I started wearing my seatbelt after that and I've, I've worn it ever since. So, <laughs> okay. So now I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the seat in next. And when I took it out, I undid the uh, front screws first. So I had to slide it forward to get to the back screws and I'm gonna have to do the opposite to put it back together. If I can find my holes here now. None too much extra room to uh, get down in there. It's always fun trying to get these holes to line up. I'm sticking all down in the hole, kind of move it over so I can get in the hole easier.
Okay, so I got those two started. Now I'll come back here and do the front ones. Hopefully they go in a little easier. Oh yeah, that one went right in. And that one went right in. That was easy. <laughs> Wish the front ones or the back ones would have went in that easy. Now I need to go back and tighten the back ones. And, uh, and these seat belts come up and they actually, there's a little clip on the front of the seat that they're supposed to hook into. They snap them together and slide them like that. It keeps them out of the way for back in the 70s, nobody warm, so they hooked them up out of the way. So let me get this back tightened down and then we'll go over to the other side. My seat belts keep me from going. <laughs> save the save the seat. And this one, I think this hole might be stripped out. I might have to put a longer bolt in it. Yeah, I think it's stripped out. So I'm going to put a longer hole, bolt in it. Oh, that one's long enough. I can get a nut on the bottom of it. So I'll go ahead and get, get that one tightened down. And then, um, I'm sweating. Um, I'll get the camera reset and we'll do the other side. Okay. Originally, I was going to move over to the other side of the car, the driver's side, and put in the carpet and the seat. But the more I thought about it, I thought, well, it doesn't make sense to be jumping back and forth, back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and do show on camera doing this whole side of the car. Um, which will be putting in the, the kick panel and the sill plate to finish out the carpet on this side, at least on the outside part of the carpet. The, the console I'm not going to do yet because I still got to get all my other stuff put back in. But um, I'll go ahead and show that, and then I will do the other side and I'll show it finished. Um, and that way I'm not like jumping back and forth, wasting a bunch of time. So, uh, first thing I want to do is. Um, this is an original kick panel on this side. The one on the driver's side, I had to order a new one. It didn't have one with it. One of the, another one of the pieces it didn't have. So normally it would have a screw up front, but there's no bracket for it. And then on the back here, the only thing that really holds it in is the, the upper dash pad coming down against here and the sill plate holding it down here. But I don't really like that because it's too hard to keep it in place till you get everything else in. So I went ahead and drilled it for a screw right here. I don't know if you can see that or if my bald head's in the way, but uh, anyway, I'm going to put the screw in right here just to hold it. And that'll hold it in place until I get the parts that actually hold it in place in there. Because the dash I won't be putting in for a while because i got to finish my gauges and stuff. So. But then on the cell plate here, hopefully that's showing up. It goes here, you try to get the carpet pulled up tight underneath of it. Like I said, whoever did this before, they've already notched around the, the bolt holes here for it. And, and I took, it had a little bit of rust here around the holes, I got most of it off. Um, other than that, the sill plates are in really good shape. So, this is another pack of screws that, I, that came with that screw set I ordered from uh, generation, uh, Corvette Generation. So I'll just put the new screws back in. The other ones, these, these are like um, black oxide. So eventually they will rust. So um, 
I'm just going to put these new ones in so at least look nice for a while. And if you keep them waxed, I'll take in, uh, a little bit of wax every once in a while and just wax the, the whole sill plate and that'll kind of help keep them from rusting for a while. But, you know, steel and water don't mix and even with that black oxide, it will eventually rust through. So once you tighten that down, that will hold the um, carpet in place. So you want to have the carpet pulled up tight under it before you tighten it down so it stays nice and tight against the uh, floor of the car. And you'll do the same thing on the other side with the console. You'll tuck it up under the console so that it stays nice and tight. And I know a lot of guys that have their cordless drill and be screwing these in, but I just don't like doing that because these are screwing into plastic nuts. And it's really hard to judge how much pressure you're putting on it when you're screwing in there, and it's real easy to strip them out. So most of this stuff, I'm not in no hurry to get this card done. It's not like I'm getting paid by the hour. I wish I was. <laughs> but um, so, there, you know, I part of doing this, I enjoy... Um, working on the car, so it's not like I'm hurrying to get it done. And I just seen something I did wrong. If you notice, I don't know if you can see this right here. I don't know if that's showing up or not. That is your dome light switch, so when you open the door, your dome lights come on. That was another thing the car didn't have. It didn't have the dome light switches, so I ordered those, and I just looked up and realized I need to put that in before I can put this on, so I'm going to have to take this all back off again. But anyway, this is what it's going to look like when it's all done. Let me get the camera over here and see if it'll show up any better here. Um, I didn't put this last screw in because obviously I'm going to take them all back out again, but that's what it's going to look like. And then... Again, that's the culprit right there. I, I just got ahead of myself. I'm, I, uh, I need to lay all my parts out ahead of time so I don't have to do stuff twice. But anyway, I'm going to pull this all back out. I'll put that switch back in, and then uh, I'll go to the other side. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. As you can see, I've got both seats in now. I've got the carpeting in on both sides. I got the all-important... Uh, dome light switches in both sides and wired up. That took a little bit of doing because of the way the wiring was ran to the car. Um, that's a bad thing when you get a car that somebody else has worked on, you're going to run into issues where stuff isn't quite what it should be and you got to kind of rework a little bit. That's the other problem I have right now. I'm doing the, uh, the tremor bar on the front windshield, which includes the sun visors. And of course, this car didn't have sun visors in when I bought it. And it's a little bit different than a 77, so are the sun visors. And um, so I had to figure out a little bit on how they mount it up. They don't give you any instructions with the parts. And sometimes it's easy to figure out. Sometimes you got to give a little bit of thought. But I think I have it figured out now. So what I want to do now is put the other piece of trim in that I have misplaced. <laughs> I just had it. Okay. Oh, there it is on the dash, huh? Okay. Now that I found my part, let's put it in. I've already got the one over on the passenger side. This is the A-pillar cover. It just uh, slips in there and it's got, it looks like little Velcro connectors right here, kind of the same things that hold in the, the T-top um, fasteners. The, the hold the t-top headliners in and uh, since it didn't have headline or the sun visors in it before whoever had this car just stuck a screw in this piece of trim to hold it up there so i'd take that back out and uh, i ordered new hardware for the 
sun visors. And uh, I don't know if you can see me over on this side. Let me check the camera. It's so hard to get into a small car like this with a camera and still have room to work. It's a little frustrating. Let me move the camera over on the other side. Yeah, hopefully this will make it just a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. The uh, hardware comes separate from the sun visor, so you got to kind of put it all together. They just slip in, they're just a friction fit, so that when you push the visor up and down, it stays wherever you put it within reason. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this one screw just started in this end, just to kind of hold it in place. Because I, I need to kind of wiggle this thing around a little bit to get it where it needs to go. somewhere. Just got to find it. There we go. Okay. Got that started. And once you get that in place, you can just kind of push it up and snap it onto that Velcro fastener. And now I got to put this piece in here. And then it goes up there like that. I got a screw loose. Okay. Now they don't have a hole poked through here. Looks like I might have to drill a hole in that. It doesn't have a hole going through the plastic on this either. So I'm gonna be right back. I got them drilled out now. I went ahead and put it back up in here. Just hold it in place. I put a screw in each side. I'll go ahead and take this screw back out. And hopefully, I can get it back in again. They're kind of awkward to get in there. They're not exactly matching up as good as I was hoping, or as good as it did on the other parts I just put on the back of the car. So, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna shorten it up a little bit more. This is not uh, going as good as the back parts did. I'm not sure I'm going to get the start in there like I need to. shorten it up anymore. I think the two rods are actually hitting each other. I'm going to pull one rod out and cut it off a little bit because I need to go back about another quarter of an inch. So I'm going to take a little bit off this one rod here. Just cut maybe three-eighths of an inch or so off the end of it. 
see if that's any better. That's yeah, better. I don't know if it's enough or not, but that's better. We'll see here pretty quick. I think it's going in. And there we go, sun visor. That actually worked pretty good. Okay, we'll go over and do the other side now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that other visor out and cut that rod off before I even get started on this one because I think I'm gonna have the same problem on it as I did on the other one. I'll get my swipe off of it. I can't let it flexes in there, but it's tight. I think that will work. And that takes care of the front trim. Not sure. It goes like that. It's supposed to fit up there, but it doesn't fit very good. I'll have to play around with that. Okay. So that takes care of the uh, interior parts I was wanting to get done today. Uh, I, I'm going to start on the dash next, but I'm waiting on an oil pressure gauge. It's on back order. I ordered it last week, and unfortunately, it's on back order. It's one part I could have used. The other parts came in I could have held off on, but I uh, need them right now. But anyway, I got the, the carpet in, the seats in, all the interior trim that I wanted to put in. Uh, so the next, I'll start on the, the driver's side. Uh, dash area with a speedometer and tack and um, I got I gotta trace down all my vacuum lines because it's it's, it's kind of different than uh, like a 77 because you have the uh, the door for the windshield wiper so you have a lot more vacuum lines there's a little vacuum um, solenoid on the back of the tack uh, and it's designed uh, to make it work where you can uh, operate the, the wipers, you know, pull the a lever under the steering column, make the wiper door stay open all the time, and you can turn the wipers on and off. Um, or you can switch it and it'll, the door will raise every time you turn the wipers on. So it's got, it's got quite a bit involved in, in hooking all that up, but uh, I got to check all that out before I can put that part of the dash back together. But uh, that'll be my next project. So uh, like I say, if you enjoy our videos, uh, hit the like and subscribe, share them with your friends, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.